So this question is a diagram question. Any question that provides visual input, I'm going to call a diagram question. So let's take a look at what we have here in the diagram before reading, just to get a little sense of what's going on. So we have beats per minute before exercise. And I would assume then that each of these dots represents a beat, right? So 56 happened once, 64 happened once, or right? 68 happened one, two, three, four, five times. But I could be wrong, so I'm going to just keep that in mind. I'm just assuming that I understand what this is all about before reading. And then beats per minute after exercise looks like the, the range here is higher, right? So we start at 80 instead of starting at 56. And it seems to be more distributed, right? Everything has at least two. Only a few places do we see the three dots. So let's start reading the information. The 22 students in a health class conducted an experiment in which they each recorded their pulse rates in beats per minute before and after completing a light exercise routine. Okay, so now we know that each of these dots represents a student, right, at one point in time. All right, so the dot plots below display the results. Got it. So down here, let S1 and R1 be the standard deviation and range, respectively. So I'm just going to write that down. So S1 equals standard dev for deviation, and R1 equals range. Okay. Of the data before exercise. Okay, so this is before, before exercise. And let S2 and R2 be the standard deviation and range, respectively, of the data after exercise. So S2... R2 is post-exercise. Same, same data, standard deviation and range. Which of the following is true? Okay, so let's see. First of all, let's take a little look again at our diagram. So the range, which is the easier thing to find here, visually, for me at least, um, the range just represents like what's the lowest value, to the highest value, what's the difference, right? So for us, for before exercise, we're at 56 up to 88. If I jump to my calculator, I can say, well, hey, what is 88 minus 56? And that number is 32. So we have a range. So R1 is actually equal to 32. R2, we have 80 up to 112. That looks like that's gonna be the exact same range. Let me see, minus 80. Yep, that's also 32. So that doesn't give us a differentiable value, but let's see if that helps us with the answers. So I only have R1 equals R2 at choice A and choice D, which means C, C, and B are gone. Okay, so and that's useful to know. So now the standard deviation. Now standard deviation is something that can be calculated, but it's also something that we can visually kind of get a sense of. The standard deviation basically, from a concept, from a conceptual standpoint, is just how far apart are the values away from like a central or a mean value. So it looks like, for instance, that most of our values for before exercise are concentrated here at 72. The next highest uh, beats per minute before exercise are right next to 72, right? They're four units away. And then we'd have a few stragglers, right? So these are not, there's not a lot of uh, deviation away from the mean here. Whereas for the after exercise, right? The, we can't even say, well, there's a value that's in the middle. Like everything's very spread out. So I would say the standard deviation before exercise, so S1, is less than the standard deviation after exercise, so S2. So S1 is less than S2. And we don't even, we're not even really asked that for choices A and D at least. We're asked if it's equal or not equal. So I'll just replace this and say, well, no, they're not the same. The standard deviations are not the same here. So D is gonna be my best answer based upon that information.